I'd like to now involve, uh, invite Daryl D'Souza for the next talk. Daryl D'Souza's story of recovering from 14 years of sickness and suffering within one year of using integrated natural therapies has inspired thousands across the globe to uh, help lead healthier lives. His book, Become Healthy or Extinct, finds readership in close to 200 countries. Daryl has devised several disease reversal programs that he does through workshops all across India. He has launched platforms for doctors, healers and therapists to work together and has also curated and convened four mind, body and spirit healing conferences. Daryl is also an organic farmer, an environmentalist, a TEDx speaker, an ambassador of Vegan Nation, founder of Earth Keepers Connect, co-founder of Mani Padma Foundation, convener of the New, New Earth Summit, and a speaker at the World Parliaments on Spirituality. Ladies and gentlemen, please put, to, put your hands together as I invite Mr. Daryl D'Souza to come to the stage. Thank you, Satyashri. And uh, if you weren't shaken and stirred with what Matthew did, or definitely I thought you uh, were to some extent. Uh, but let me continue that with a different shaking and stirring from within. Okay? And that's my topic. Uh, What are the 10 uh, best uh, foods and 10 uh, worst foods for health? I'm going to start with the 10 bad, okay? Because that is more important uh, because we are having that very regularly and it's causing a lot of health problems. So, talking about 20 foods is going to take quite some time. So I'm just going to show some pictures of them and, you know, give you a, a detailed dialogue on it. And uh, all of this is there in more detail in my book. Okay. Uh, and yes, we are, there are copies available also in our stall section. Yeah, this is from a chapter in my book called uh, Common Foods That Ruin Our Health. You'll see it somewhere a little lower in the index. Yeah, sorry, it's in the middle, okay? Common Foods That Ruin Our Health. So, getting straight to the point, father of modern medicine gave some very good advice, but this is what we think of it in the world today. We think we have freedom, we think we have imagination, we can do whatever we want. So, <laughs> so of course, that's the modern dimwit. The person who is, you know, thinks they are very uh, intelligent and aware, but sadly that's not the case. So here is one of the main and I put it on the top of the list of unhealthy foods and these are all the illnesses that it is causing. I'll just list all of these things that milk and milk products, this is animal's milk like cow's milk and buffalo milk. Isn't it shocking? These are some of the most common chronic illnesses in the world. Okay. And uh, to acidity, yes, there are other contributors also. If you drink alcohol on a daily basis, we know that alcohol is acid. But milk also contributes very highly to acidity. So I'm not saying that only milk is causing all of these things, but milk is contributing to all of these illnesses. In this list, if I would say that, you know, alcohol is not contributing to hormonal imbalance, I'll just give you the rest quickly. Okay, so alcohol is not contributing to intestinal bloating and gas, diarrhea. The 
diabetes, obesity, kidney stones, cataract glaucoma, it is contributing to all the bone diseases. It is not contributing to cough and cold, pneumonia, tonsillitis, bronchitis, hormonal imbalance. No, alcohol is not contributing to them. But milk is... Cont so, milk is even more harmful than alcohol. Okay, the, in this list, the primary contribution of milk, 100%, is the last line. Hormonal imbalance, menstrual problems, polycystic ovarian disease that women have cysts on the ovaries, fibroids in the uterus, a little bit of hormonal imbalance also comes from emotions and relationships. Primary contribution of uh, uh, milk is to cataract and glaucoma. You don't get cataract and glaucoma by, you know, having alcohol. So these details are there, they are researched, and they have been worked upon and given to people, and people who have left milk and milk products have reversed all of these illnesses in a very fast time. And of course, to get rid of acidity, you have to reduce your alcohol consumption also. Now, where will you find all this information and of how milk is causing all these problems? There are these books that I'm listing. But even before that, I want to ask you some fundamental questions on milk. Fundamental question is, which mammal on this planet is drinking milk after the age of three or four years. We got 250, 300 mammals on the planet. Besides human beings, none of them are drinking milk. There is a very detailed half an hour talk I can give just on this one evidence why they are not drinking and why we are eating, drinking. Yeah, but that will take away my entire time. So this is what you can read in my book and I'll give you another four or five books. Okay, listed. Globally known books. So... This is one book, The China Study. You can take photographs of these uh, books. Very well researched. And this book explains how the Chinese have the least cataract glaucoma problems and joint problems. Okay, because as a, as a society, they believe in the, the Tao. Tao is the universal intelligence that tells them all things, or creator. They just saw that creator has made life in this way, and neither does the mammal young one, after drinking milk for three, four years, they don't go back to their mothers. They go and eat other food. And then the mother's uh, uh, breast also stop lactating. And they said, this is done and designed by Tao, and we salute it, and that's, so we don't need it. But the extra modern, madden, uh, modern man has decided that they want it. So you'll find the research in this book. This was one of my first books on nutrition that I uh, read and studied, John Robbins. John Robbins was the son, you know, he was the empire to the Baskin Robbins empire. He was the son of that house and he did his research so well and he said that you know milk is the poison that is uh, that we are having can you imagine the research of this person to write that and get kicked off of all the billions of dollars and family fortune and everything to say this another book by dr. NK Sharma milk the silent killer this book is only on milk. All the minute details it will give you. And then lastly, I mentioned, uh, there's, there's a ni very nice section in my book on milk and uh, uh, you know why it is causing all of these problems. So what is the replacement if we don't have cow's milk and buffalo's milk? Something that's more natural to us, which is nuts. And you can take just soak almonds overnight, 10 almonds overnight, uh, uh, peel off the skin and, uh, you know, put it in a blender with a little bit of water and you have almond milk. 
and you have hemp milk, you have coconut milk, you have peanut milk, you have watermelon seed milk, pumpkin milk, any, you can juice any milk, you know, any seed and make a milk of it. And from this milk, you can make cheese, mayonnaise, curd, cheesecake, whatever you want. And the beauty is, you can put a lot of herbs in it, so it can turn out to be even tastier than Amul cheese. You can make butter also out of it. So just by giving up the animal's milk, you will do a lot of, and none of these, I mean these are all our healthy foods, They'd have, they cause no illness. So right now I am talking about both the, the bad food and what is the good food in its, the replacement. So people know about curd and all that, so I am just talking of the alternative to curd. Now when you ferment, because you want good bacteria in your system, so there are other ways of getting good bacteria. The first is called cultured vegetables. In the chapter probiotics in my book, you will find out how to make this particular thing. It is so simple and so close to nature, it is just chopped up vegetables in water. You don't need salt, you don't need any starter culture, you do not need saline, nothing. Because if it is truly natural, then when the fruit falls down or the carrot is there in the ground and its time is over, it decomposes and goes back to the soil. You know, it's an organic process. And so in that, the, the bacteria and all is circulating. We have to, there's such a simple uh, fermented food and they bring the strains of all their range of bacteria. So radish has got a certain strain of bacteria, it comes in it. Then you got uh, carrot is there, uh, cabbage is there, capsicum, you know, even a cucumber. So, something very close to nature. The next is this earthen pot with uh, what you call kanji. That's uh, Mysore red rice that you can see there. And I've also put a little chili tops, just two chili tops for further uh, fermenting, but it will ferment without uh, chili tops also. So we have got the right strains coming through the right kind of foods. The next is this. You can make out from the picture, right? What are we talking about? Sugar. Yeah, and especially processed sugar that has got uh, chemicals in it. And what is the replacement for this, why, why do we need, why does everybody have a sweet tooth? If you have seen my TEDx talk, which is what is food for human beings, you will come to understand the hierarchy of food. And it explains, and it's an experiment that you do with yourself. Just watch that talk and do that experiment yourself and you will come out with the entire nutritional model with, and it's just 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, you will understand what is food for human beings completely. And in that, it explains how, why, why fruits are one of the primary foods. So yes, we are all born with a sweet tooth. That's one of our primary foods. And the amount of fruits a person should eat every day is actually the equivalent of four of five apples, of four of five bananas. Now, how many of you are eating that much of fruit per day? Please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, three of you have read my book and started following the advice. <laughs> so I'm counting only three. Or maybe you knew it from other places also. Yes, okay. So the problem is that that human being who does not have the basic necessary amount of the sugars, the vitamins, the mineral fibers that we get from fruits, you are starving your body of its primary food. You, your body is into malnutrition. And that degree of malnutrition, this is an organism that knows how to get what it wants and it is not going to stop. So it will sensitize your tongue and your smell to things in which there are sugar. So if you're not eating that much amount of fruits and you pass a cake shop, cookie shop, even a biscuit, you will go for it. 
Don't think that this is your mind. A sweet tooth is not come from your father, from my mother. It's your personality type and I'm this and that. No. It is basic biology of human beings. So yes, coming back to sugar. Now, you are going to have this sweet tooth forever. Till the day you do what I did in 2010, for 21 days in a row, you have fruits at your first breakfast, just one time meal only. Sit down and try to have one fruit at a time or in a day. That's the best kind of, don't make for a fruit salad, okay? So just have one breakfast full of fruits that, you, you know, you eat a papaya, one, two slices and all that. There's no such thing as rationing. Like, you know, even animals, they don't do that. Eat, eat how much papaya you want. If it's a whole papaya, yes, finish it, be happy. Get your stomach full and that's enough of fruit for the day. If you do this for 21 days in a row and your body, so 21 days is the time where a body, you know, replaces an old habit with a new one. And I did this in 2010 and after 22nd, 23rd day, I had no sweet tooth left at all. Nothing, all sweet meats and all that, I had no attraction towards them. You're not going to get rid of a sweet tooth by have, making new year resolution and seeing a dietitian and taking all sorts of advice and replacing it with apple cider vinegar and you know all those things. So the second, uh, the third food that I'm talking about is all our soft drinks. Okay, they've all got different concocted synthetic versions of sweeteners even the Diet Cokes and all, they've got things that are causing cancer. Okay? So, our attraction to all of these things is only because we do not have the enough amount of fruits per day. So, of course, here's a very colorful picture, but I would always advise to have local uh, and seasonal fruits. Because their elements and their balance is in balance with the elements around us and we will remain in health if we remain in that energy balance of the five elements, what Annie Kohli spoke earlier today about. Here's another food that is making us very sick. What is it? Wheat. Okay, now and more than the whole grain, this powdered version of wheat, which we call wheat flour. Another one similar to this is polished rice. I've explained in my book that the amount of grains we eat is too high. It's artificial. It's done by a food industry. And do you know that uh, there, was an, uh, there is an article written by ex-Prime uh, Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, where she's talking clearly about there is too much of wheat and rice production in the world. And in nature, wherever you go roaming on the planet, you will not see fields and fields of wheat and all of that. Like you go into a jungle, you'll see, you know, 10 mango trees at one place, you'll see 20 uh, papaya trees just growing around like in this uh, kind of a volume. But you'll not see wheat growing so much everywhere. Nature does not produce so much of wheat. And it is not one of our main foods. In my book, the technical details of the acidity it causes, what is gluten and how it damages your in intestines, what is leptin that is there in rice, how is that doing a damage. And we are supposed to eat whole foods, that means the way in which God gave them. Okay, and this previous picture with the wheat, with the bran, that's a whole food. The rice with a bit of bran, that is also whole food and that's fiber. But what we do is, we process it, okay? So this wheat is just taken in a, ground, uh, in a mill and it's ground. And we say, oh, we are, we are having wheat flour and rice flour. Do you know that both of these grains, they contain, contain phytic acid? 
and phytic acid does slow damage to your intestines. Read the technical aspects of it from my book. Because phytic acid is an enzyme inhibitor. That what what is its function? Now in the rains when uh, you know uh, it rained, all the wheat and uh, wheat and rice normally in nature also even if we are not cultivating it grows, and then the grains fall on the ground and they dry up and they remain like that through the whole year, till next year the rain comes and it requires that eight to ten hours of water to go on that grain for it to release the phytic acid. Only when phytic acid is released, the grain will sprout. Otherwise, all through the year, when there's no water falling on that, the grain remains on the ground and it does not grow. That's why you do not have this crazy thing happening in nature that wheat is growing 365 days a year. It does not happen. So nature has got its own mechanisms. And we are taking this and we are milling it. And in that flour, there's phytic acid that is causing damage to us. Much, much earlier in Egyptian times and all of that, the only grains that were eaten were sprouted grains. Because they at least knew this basic science of life, can release what is there in that uh, food, in these grains, that is damaging in nature for the human body. Okay, so what is the alternative to these? It is what we used to grow and cultivate much earlier and those are all the millets. Some of the millets are listed in this chart. Now today at our stall, our stalls are all these alternative uh, health food products. The Earth Keepers grocery stall and the organic uh, fruits and vegetables and all we'll be having tomorrow evening. Uh, that's what we do at the Earth Keepers market. So we are selling about 10 to 12 alternate grains for wheat and rice. There is little millet, kodo millet, uh, pearl millet, then there is amaranth, there is uh, buckwheat, there is quinoa, there is green millet, there is, uh, what did I say, one more, yeah. So all the millets possible you will find at our counters. They do not cause excess weight, okay, wheat and rice make you put on a lot of weight. The next thing I want to talk about is salt. Again, which species on this planet besides human being is adding salt to their food? Now why am I giving you comparison of all animals? Sometimes I will give a comparison of plants, sometimes I will give a comparison of reptiles. Because they are the ones who are following law of God and the natural sciences and none of them are sick. We have lost all our sciences and we don't know what is right and wrong and we have no references, all the references amongst human beings are wrong. So now we have to learn what is life, what is health, what is the flow of energy, what is nutrition. We have to learn from the animals and the plants. So nobody is adding salt to their food. People who have too much of salt in their diet. So where is the monkey getting sodium and chloride in his blood form? He's just eating all nuts uh, on, on all the vegetables and roots and bark, whatever they get. And the sodium and chloride is there in those things. It is there in, in nature. It is not so much well balanced in our own plants that we cultivate because we don't know how to make proper soil that gives good mineral balance. There's no iodine in our soil. So that iodine is also added over here. And the stable salt is the worst thing. They put things like aluminum hydroxide inside this which is causing uh, neuralgia and Alzheimer's and brain dysfunction. Just to keep it, we want something convenient on the table to pour. So that's why uh, when you make uh, powder of salt, to keep it dry, you put all these chemicals in it. What is the replacement? Something closer if you want salt is Himalayan rock salt. Nobody has touched that, you know, in millions of years. And even you get rock salt in the land. This will not cause high blood pressure. This is refined cooking oils. Which species on the planet who is eating any food is frying it and eating it? Only human beings, only the sick ones, human beings. 
What is the replacement to this? Where the monkey and the chimpanzee getting their oils and still swinging on two fingers? From all their nuts, from their roots, from barks of trees, from leaves also, fruits also. So all these things are there in nature. The next most harmful food is, this is where we go every day. Like we, have, we really don't know what is food, so we just have to kind of get into the mall and look on the board where is food. And then when we walk into the aisle, that is supposed to be our food. Okay, these are the things that are causing cancer and all of that. This is something like real food, what is there in nature growing or if we cultivate it naturally. Again, like Annie Coley said, how much do you have to do? You just take, take the seed and put it in the ground and water it. Food will happen. They are doing probably a hundred steps to make all of this. Make the paper, print the paper, make the bottle, put this, that. From complicated food, we are getting complicated diseases. Here's another great thing, microwave. Vibrates the water content in the food and changes the molecular structure of food itself. Simple experiment, take nicely fresh prepared rice, okay, cool it down, put it in three quarter plates, China, put the first plate inside the microwave for one minute, the second one for two minutes, bring it out, let it cool down, the third one for three minutes, bring it out, from the original rice that you took in the bowl, you can mash it, you can put, you know, on an envelope and you can, uh, you know, we stick envelopes and all that with it, right? It'll stick. The one that has gone for three minutes, no? You take it and you try to stick an envelope. That envelope will not stick and it'll open up and you'll find powder residue behind. So that rice is not even rice. And people ask me, okay, okay, I won't cook, uh, you know? I'm saying this is such damaged food. People say that, Okay, I won't cook in microwave. Can I warm? So I said, yeah, if you don't, don't want fully damaged food, then you have a half damaged food, if that works for you. It changes the molecules to an extent that when it goes in your body, the immune system cannot recognize it. It says, oh, here's some foreigner. Let us prepare immune, immune defenses and try to block this from absorption in the intestines. This is what is going on. And half of the thing you put in your body, it's not even being absorbed because the body doesn't want your junk. This intelligence is over a million years old. For how long have you been working your mind and human beings been thinking and working on food? So, this is something like natural food. The only thing it's cut up is just like if you're biting it. That's the real food. What is this? Okay, right. Coffee, of course, very visible. Tea? Yeah. In the next edition of my, web, my book, I'm uh, giving very, uh, details about coffee. How these coffee beans, they contain the most concentration of microtoxins that the coffee plant has made when it's growing up. Now all plants, you see all plants know how to live and survive and fend off all kind of, you know, uh, things that are attacking them and trying to eat them up for food. So plant biology makes microtoxins because these also have, even before human beings came, the plants, they have a longer life history on this planet. They have deeper sciences than us. First they came for so many millions of years. Then we came from cellular matter and started eating them and making them our food. Okay, so these plants are here. Whichever plants on the planet have survived, they know how to survive and not get eaten up. Their, their whole science is, how do I grow to a point that I can multiply? The ones who did not have the science, they are gone, extinct. So the uh, plant is, how do I grow and prevent the germs from eating me and come to the flowering and fruiting stage where I can multiply. So these are all microtoxins that are there and when we take a lot of it, we start... So this is, this is the neurotoxin that makes you get up and give you energy rush. 
who are the people who need coffee and tea to wake them up in the morning they are people who have serious hormonal imbalance issues okay and energy imbalance issues because i am on a healthy diet when i get up in the morning if it's whether it's 6:30 or 7 i never get up with an alarm if i get up wake up my eyes at, you know 7 o'clock in the morning i just realize i am in the room and then i get out of bed step down by the time i step down and take take three steps i can do anything in the world i can do maths i can do singing dancing whatever i do my work and all of that gardening and all i'm fully awake if you are getting up in the morning and you are groggy and you are still at the wash basin and you are you know cannot you brush your teeth and you have to take 15 minutes half an hour and then you have to plonk yourself on the sofa okay bring me my tea and my coffee i need to get started for the day then you are a sick person you do not have proper energy balance in your system by the end of the evening oh i'm so drowsy give me my coffee no if you're on the right kind of food till the time you go to sleep at night till one hour before uh, uh, you know sleeping time you are completely awake so what is the replacement for these things even green tea you know the research is coming out of green tea the people who are doing green tea every day regularly and all they are getting sick now because green tea also and the leaves they also got microtoxins so if you do too much of the any one of these herbs you see they are not a natural food Uh, mangoes are natural food bananas are natural food but you don't just go walking into a green uh, you know tea garden and eat those leaves it's not a natural food they have nutrients and all that they are good for certain things but we need to limit our use we are selling all of these uh, uh, herbal teas also wonderful uh, herbal teas that you don't get in uh, many, uh, most of the shops in goa it's on our counter very tasty you don't need a uh, tea coffee or salaim or anything and this is real this is uh, each of these teas on my website you will see the health benefits of all of them they are there on the packets also please go and see this this is the real uh, healing things that we can have this is my tedx talk what i was talking about uh, this is an old picture i think is reaching almost 2 million views now because people are getting lot of insights from it and sharing with uh, other people here's a picture of our food supply chain and you may think oh those people are growing some people are manufacturing and all of that comes to us and we have no option now i i specialized for many years in supply chain engineering from starting to end and i know how supply chains run and one thing that i want to say over here is the people at the end of the supply chain they run the entire supply chain by demand run supply chain if you are okay with what crap comes on your table and that is there in the shop it will keep on coming if you say no to these things then if you say no to this and you stop eating those things then whatever stocks are here processed sugar sto stock will remain over here it will date expire the message goes here hey guys stop supplying us because it's not moving and then the message goes here to growing we don't have to do morchas and education and you know uh, be after all of these people we just need to know what is healthy and unhealthy food and make the change right now we run the entire supply chain if you are complaining it about it it's you have been part of this problem without knowing and f forgetting you know what is actual food and this is the future what we try to say here that uh, people should live more close to their food and not have this long transportation packing and all of that expenses added to it and the need for preservatives why if you have your food growing close to you you can just go buy it and eat it the same day low cost also and uh, in the brochures our uh, earth keepers market details are there it's a organic uh, market where you get organic fruits vegetables and some of our counters are here so when it's natural and organic people are saying oh it's 25% uh, expensive but the fact is uh, over even 6 months or a year you will see you will save more money with this philosophy this is me in my uh, front and my back of my house it's just 200 square meters that i have around my house i'm growing about 25 fruits and vegetables having such a busy life also i have a, have just one help ashok who manages it 
I advise him what to do. But we can all do this. Even if you have one square meter of mud, no, land or two pots in the house, you should be growing your own food and at least getting some supply of what is real. Thank you.